Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Genshin Impact. So, the second round has concluded. We are already going to... well, not actually. As a matter of fact, there is one person that is missing. It is the sponsor of this event actually, because we haven't seen him uh, for a very long time and also there have been like some mysterious people that have been like wandering around the Ermites actually. It seems that the that this event made uh, other like people, many tourists come in into here. However, the Ermites seems to be uninterested in this and maybe something might happen or is going on now because we uh, well we encounter candace and dia and they say that they found something or some people that were planning something they were ifs dropping them to be honest but that doesn't mean that that wasn't that their intentions are for no <laughs> but that means well yeah that that doesn't mean that their intentions are good at all so we ask around for uh, the matra and other people for for help to stay vigilant and everything. However, we really need to find this person, or else we don't know what kind of trouble they might get into. We might get into actually. So now let's. Um, we are looking for a Haytham to like gather more information about this this person. And it seems that Alhaitham stepped down from the role of Grand Sage. I mean, I know he didn't like the... Uh, what do you call it? Oh yeah, he didn't like the the role of being a, a Grand Sage. He preferred to being a scribe, but... Oh, come on, Alhaitham, you were in a really good position. Okay. It seems Nilo is here, but Alhaitham is... Ahatham? Why? What is it? We're trying to track down someone and we need him to pull up some records for us. Oh, I see. Sorry, I don't know where he went. He's always the first to leave after the competition ends, and he never tells anyone where he'll be going. Huh. Yeah, actually, that sounds about right for him. Hmm. Let me think. Um... To be honest, he doesn't seem very interested in the extravaganza, so he probably doesn't stick around longer than he has to. To him, being a commentator is just extra work he was roped into. Do you guys know of any places he'd go after work? I mean, at tavern, or maybe he went home. Hmm, I can't, I don't know for sure. At tavern, maybe? Oh god. Uh... There's still one more round to go. Would he really go to a tavern in the middle of the competition? Oh, here's a thought. Maybe he just went straight home. Paimon remembers that his house isn't that far from here, so we might as well check it out. All right, fair enough. Then we are going to check on uh, Al Haytham's home. I wonder where Al Haytham would go. Yeah, us too. <laughs> All right. Now, let's go to our Haytham's home and see if we can find him there. Oh no, not there. <laughs> I, 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 did, I didn't pay attention. Um, yeah, let's teleport and see. I don't know where Haytham's home is. I, I guess it makes sense that w w that's why we needed to do the Archon quest first, but meh. Or a history quest first. But again, nah, I mean, this has nothing to do with it, so, or too much, to be honest. So let's go and check on him. Oh, he was here. Oh, so that makes sense. Ah, his, his house is really close to the academia, huh? Okay, we are here. And it does. It just says, "Knock." Let's knock. Now I 
answer? Uh, maybe no one's home. <clears throat> Let's knock again. Knock. Hello? Oh, it's you two? Oh, Kabe, you're home! Come on in, I'll get the door for you. What? <laughs> what does that mean? Why would he call the door for us? And you here we are. Peep when we first knocked, we thought no one was home. Well, I can't be too careful. If someone from the academia came here looking for all Haytham, and I opened the door for them without thinking, before long the whole city would know that I'm living here. You're pretty conscientious about this, huh? So, what happens if someone comes inside looking for him while you're at home? It's fine, as long as I stay in my own room. Anyway, why would someone just barge in here looking for him? Most people have better things to do. Nah, fair enough. So do you know where he is at the moment? What do you think? Who knows what he does in his free time? All that matters to me is that he's out of the house. Uh, <laughs> did you have a quarrel or something? Because it seems like you did with him. I wouldn't call it that. He's just incapable of saying anything pleasant at all. I told him how the second round went. I won the lot draw, remember? Because of good karma, of course. My luck's on the rise. But him, being him... Oh, you wouldn't believe what he said after I was done talking! You're always quick to remind me that you're my upperclassman, and yet you do not problem-solve in the manner becoming of an upperclassman. This begs the question of why we attach prestige to seniority at all. What does he mean, manner becoming of an upperclassman? What, am I supposed to earn the title of upperclassman now? And he didn't stop there. He said, I'd encourage you to reflect on why you've ended up having to rely on luck every round. Frankly, it's incomprehensible to me how you've managed to make it to this age without acknowledging the proverbial elephant in the room of your life. <laughs> yeah, that does sound like something all Haytham would say. That's true, I mean, he will come up with philosophical and all that kind of nonsense just to scold someone. I've had it with him. Every time I talk to him, it's the same way. He finds a way to infuriate me every single time. <sighs> anyway, the disdain is very much mutual between us, so I'll be moving out as soon as possible. I'm actually packing my things right now. He'll have to get used to doing his own cleaning and tidying from now on. See those perfectly hung paintings on the walls? They're coming with me too. <laughs> if his life wasn't utterly devoid of artistic sensibility already, it certainly will be after today. Wait, you're moving out already? But the competition isn't even over yet. How can you afford it? Well, obviously I can't just yet. I'm just pecking early to get ahead of the game. I've got my new place picked out already. The moment I have my hands on the prize money, I'm going to buy it and move my things right in. It'll take me three days tops to move out of here for good. Um, and what if he doesn't win? Then what? I now know what I have to do to achieve this goal. No matter what happens in the third round, I will win. I will emerge triumphant. You'll see. Well, we'll be rooting for you. But... Are you sure you'll be alright? Hmm? In what way? Layla said that she thinks you'll get caught up in internal conflict. Meaning what exactly? Oh, don't tell me you think I have serious personality flaws too. I mean, who doesn't have personality flaws? Everyone has their own, so... Oh, we didn't say that! <laughs> but think about it. You say you want to win, but you also turned Farozan down when she offered to give you her points. Plus, you took it upon yourself to help those desert foxes. Wait, what's so unusual about all that? I gave you my reasons. I would have felt guilty otherwise. Where's the conflict in that? Well, truth be told, 
you have been doing the right thing over something different. So uh, with this, we think that it may backfire to you again. Why would you feel guilty, to be honest? Well, when you put it like that, yes, why indeed? It's a good question. I guess it's just in my nature. Plus, if I just did nothing, then there'd be no escaping the blame if something bad came of it later down the line. But thinking like that all the time must make your life so exhausting. Not to mention that by helping out, you put yourself at risk. Fainting in the middle of the desert, for example. Was that really worth it? It's complicated. I... Look, let's maybe leave this conversation for another time. What was it you needed all Haytham's help with, anyway? Well, truth be told, um, we'd like him to help us look into Sachin. Sachin? Huh. He did actually mention a Sachin recently. I remember he brought a few documents home that day. He was thinking out loud as he looked through them, making some notes and doodling as he went. He even suggested that I should take a look, but I didn't. Uh, give me a moment. Let me go find them. Ah, this is the one. Here, take it. Uh, you sure he'd be okay with this? Huh, with taking liberties? He's certainly okay with helping himself to my beer whenever he pleases. And anyway, he did ask me if I wanted to read his notes. I didn't see the point at the time, so he just left them on the side. He doesn't leave documents lying around unless he's okay with other people reading them. It's fine, I promise. Cool, if you say so. Okay, let's see what he's got on Sachin. Okay, it seems that we have to read. Have it. Investigate the documents on the table. I fetched the documents for you. Feel free to look through them at your leisure. Okay, thank you. Then let's check this out. Okay, uh, uh, tabletop documents. Sachin was born to a wealthy family, and his father, Rajput, was a renowned merchant in Sumer. With many properties to his name at the age of nine, Sachin enrolled into Bahumana and achieved excellent grades. At the age of 15, he completed all his courses and graduated first cl in class, his accomplishments greatly lauded by the sages. At 16, Sachin ventured out and began to s research the local environments and customs. His travels took him throughout Sumer's rainforests and deserts. When he was 23 years old, his father Rajput passed away. Sachin returned to Sumer City to take over his family, father's business and spent two years here. At 25, Sachin once again ventured into the desert to conduct uh, field research. Records to show that he traveled with a caravan and lived in our village for a period of time. At 32, Sachin returned to Sumer City. He looked withery and weary, his mental state in shambles. Much speculation arose amongst outsiders, but Sachin locked himself in his room and did not respond. One year later, yeah, one year later, Sachin entrusted all his properties to, to the Academia and pledged to donate them all proceeds to the Academia. He then wrote a contract regarding the use of the, process, uh, of the proceeds and property ownerships. The following is an excerpt quote from Sachin that when the contract was signed. Minimum of 30% of all revenue generated from the business will be used to fund prizes for the Interdashan Championship, which will encourage young prodigies to actively participate in the competition. I will also be donating my entire collection, the most prominent item of which the Diamond of Knowledge will serve as a symbol of great honor in the, in the Interdashan Championship. Only the winner of the competition may wear it. In addition, the Academia is only given the right to maintain and manage my properties. Ownership of them does not belong to the Academia. 
okay so they are going to manage them but they do not belong to the academia sure nor does it belong to me what each year when the international championship is held i will keep a, clo an, a close eye on each candidate if i particularly identify with a participant i will reveal myself I would then benefit all of my wealth to this individual whom I judge worthy of my knowledge. They will have the usage rights to all assets and proceeds under my name. I hope the academia will respect any and all decision decisions made by that person. After the contract came into effect, Sachin returned to the desert to continue his investigations, but there has been no word from him since then. Many claim to have seen him in the desert, but none of such claims have been verified. Twenty years have, have passed since then? What? So he has been out for so long? We don't, then who was that person? That was a lot of information. My mom's getting a headache. So, to sum up, Sachin put the Academia in charge of managing his estate and went off to do research, right? He even said that if he really liked one of the contestants, he wouldn't just give them a reward, but his entire estate as well! Oh, that must be worth heaps and heaps of Mora! What? Are you serious? All of Sachin's wealth, that's... more than I could spend in a lifetime, surely. Heck, if I got chosen, I'd be able to pay off all my debts, then buy a new place, and still have cash to burn. I could build another palace of Alcazar's array, except this time, I'd make it ten times bigger. Oh, then there's that new project in Port Ormos, of course. The bridge renovation. To do it properly would take upwards of... Hey, hey, snap out of it! You're getting way ahead of yourself there, mister! Uh, you're right. First, I need to focus on winning and moving out of this place. I mean, yeah, <laughs> come on, dude. even if he was going to choose you, what are the odds of that? There are six other competitors, to be honest. And also other stuff to do. Huh? Wait a moment. There's a loose slip of paper tucked in between these pages. Did I hate them write this? It looks like he was jotting ideas down as he was thinking things over. Hmm. Let's see. Um, two phrases have been circled. Sachin, dead or alive, unknown. And diadem of knowledge. Some of this stuff is just plain incomprehensible. Is this written in some other language? Let me see. Huh. I recognize this script. Hmm, give me a second. <clears throat> Lofty ideals may provide no defense at all against nihilism, but perhaps little decisions can. That's a rough translation, anyway. I can't guarantee it's 100% accurate. Hmm? There's another, smaller line of text underneath. Uh, huh. Why would he bring that up? Wow! It's so cool that you can actually read this script! We worked together on a project once when we were students. The title was Decoding the Runes and Architectural Philosophy of the Ruins of King Deshret's Civilization. I had to familiarize myself a little with this script at the time. Oh, interesting. So, any idea what Alhatham meant by all this? Huh, <laughs> who knows? The way his mind works is one of the great mysteries of the world. Fair enough. Well, guess we've learned all we can here. <sighs> okay, let's hope Arabas made some progress. Yeah, he better catch those crooks. But until then, uh, let's just head out for a stroll. Okay, fair enough. Alright, so the second act has ended. However, we still have one more act to do. We have to wait until the following act. Hmm, little decisions. What could have been going through his mind when he wrote that? Hmm. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, look at that. This is a little library they have going in here. 
with our desk and everything. And what do they have on this side? Okay, that should lead to one of the dorms. And that one too. Hmm. Okay, so there's the library. And also, oh, there was, there is nothing here. But this should lead to the, the rooms or something, I don't know. <laughs> but for a small place in the in the inside, it's, it's quite big, to be honest. Alright, now let's, let's get out of here and... Well, escape through time, because let's try and get up until the... Up until the certain point. Before, I, we, I guess we could do until... The third round begins, maybe? I will continue then, but... Uh, uh, why do I have to be so short on time? But do you really think that Cave will move out of the... of this... of Alhaitham's house or something? Will he be able to win the thing? I'm wondering who won... who is going to win this thing, actually. Okay, that's part two done. Now we are on to the third part. I guess I could reach third part and then be done. Or when it says that the third part begins. I guess it would be the best idea. Okay, third ancient championship. That part two, that part three. The third ancient championship is coming to a close. The dungeon of knowledge sits at the finish line waiting its work so will it be some sort of like i don't know hand to hand combat or something oh the following let's say 709 a.m since, since the second day i guess it makes sense mm -hmm. There you go. Simon just heard that the That's Madra have arrested some Aramites who snuck into the city. Maybe they were the ones plotting to kidnap Sachin. But let's go to the academia and check with Araf. Dude, Simon, uh, uh, didn't we like read that uh, Sachin was doing some investigation in the desert? And if that's true, then do they really have him or something, or are they here to like? Enjoy the festivities and whatnot. I think that it, it, this is irrelevant to the case. Maybe that they are trying to like <laughs> trying to steal p other people's things makes sense or something, but I don't think that's the case for uh, this guy. Sachin, I mean. All right, let's see what you got. Ah, uh, you're here. Sorry, I was just about to send someone to inform you. I only just finished interrogating the suspects. What did you find out? Well, lots of unexpected details, let's put it that way. The mercs themselves were surprisingly easy to catch. We just had someone dress up as Sachin and they took the bait. Oh my god, really? Wow! But then it starts to get messy. During the interrogation, we learned that they were hired by Sachin's own child. What? They ha he has a child? What? Why would someone want to kidnap their own father? What's up with that? It's anybody's guess at this point. In any event, apparently the guys we caught are just the tip of the iceberg. Most of them are still snooping around outside the city. We're diverting manpower as we speak to try and round them all up. Would you like to come along? Okay, sure. sure. Let's go get to the bottom of all this. Yep, <laughs> I think I think that's a better idea. Now part three has been done. So let's get until before we start with the third round of this interdiction championship. And then yeah, let's go and see if we can interrogate these people because uh, this is pretty messed up actually. The fact that they uh, are here in the name of the of uh, Sachin's like child really doesn't add up! It, no, it makes no sense to be honest. How and why? Really? Ok, 
Okay. Uh, some someone they thinks the process actually, and then <laughs> Kabe, he was like, ah, mm. oh, but Sino could have been like way too good, too good to see to say that too. He actually interrogated one of the people back then in the Arkham Fest. It was pretty funny to be honest. Uh, I should do their uh, story quest. Okay, uh, hey, Tanta uh, Mary. Are you sure this is the right place? Something feels off. I'm positive, but I don't understand why they're all unconscious on the ground. Wait. Oh yeah, they, this, they, they are these people. These are the mercenaries. You're right. But who will have taken them down? Okay, let's find out. Boss, we got more company. Look, we were just doing what we were paid to do. You're punishing the wrong people here. You want the real culprit? It's this guy. He hired us to kidnap Sachin. <clears throat> what happened? Who beat you all up? Wait, you mean you aren't with them? With who? Who did this? Uh, first there was this flying brat. Didn't bother asking any questions, just started throwing punches. After that, some guy wearing green came along and interrogated us for a bit. Oh, so it's um, it was Wonder and and Alheta. So that's what were they what were they were they doing? Um, they were looking for this person or at least taking down the. Ah, uh, what? Uh, yeah, at least they, they were taking down the people here, these mer mercenaries. I've got the confirmation I needed. This is the one who masterminded this whole plot. Jawani, Sachin's son. If you have any questions for him, now's your chance to ask them. When you're done, I'm arresting them all and taking them back to the Academia for further interrogation. So why did you hire people to kidnap Sachin? Hmm. <laughs> what do you think? 20 years ago, he upped and left to go and live a carefree life, not giving a second thought for my welfare. As if that's not bad enough already, he wouldn't put his entire fortune in the care of the Academia, along with a contract saying that one day he'd pass it all on to a genius he admired. That's my inheritance. By rights! You expect me to sit back and watch it go to someone else? If he won't give me what's mine, I'll just have to take it from him. Were you seriously, were you seriously planning to? Of course! Didn't he say he would be here somewhere, watching the championship from the shadows? So, I figured I'd get some people to nab him. Then I make him change the contract. And if the academia doesn't agree to hand over the goods, I make him publicly announce that I'm his chosen genius. Oh, really? So, did you find him? No. The old fart knows how to stay hidden. I'll give him that. He's probably cooped up somewhere watching all this go on and laughing to himself. <clears throat> I already thought he'd gone mad 20 years ago. And who knows what a madman's truly capable of? Well, you, when you put it that, like that, <laughs> okay. What do you know about the diadem of knowledge? Diadem of knowledge? You mean that thing he donated to the academia? Well, I can tell you that it's very expensive. He sold a lot of assets to purchase it back in the day. <laughs> Weird things started happening after he brought it home too. For example. Sometimes we'd hear a high-pitched voice coming from the storage room. Also, before donating it to the Academia, he once shut himself in that same storeroom and researched it non-stop for days. Something was already seriously wrong with him by that point. Nothing he did shocked me. What? So, Sachin was the person that we saw in the stage because there was, it was a voice that said something. Let's let's continue because it is weird to be honest. Maybe he passed away? I don't know. What do you mean something wrong with him? I only have a vague memory of it, since I was very young at the time. 
But I have the impression that he went out into the desert for research and didn't return for many years. When he finally did return, he was a changed person. He would mumble incomprehensibly and write essays day and night. I asked if I could see what he'd written, but he chased me out of the room. Later, he went out somewhere and took his written essays with him. When he got back, he signed his contract with the academia. Part of me wonders whether he'd already stopped being my father by that point. Perhaps the man we called Sachin was a demon from the desert who was wearing his skin. Uh, okay, you can stop now. You're creeping Paimon out. You can believe me or not. Doesn't matter to me. I told you all I know. But if you do see Sachin, tell him this for me. Whatever it is that he's researching out there, he'll always be garbage in my eyes. Yep, fair enough. We'll tell him. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 well, I can relate somehow. <laughs> to be honest, so let's continue. You finished? In that case, come with us. Well, we finally caught the guy behind all this. Thanks for providing us with the critical information. Do you still have any lingering concerns? Um, yes. The diadem, the diadem of knowledge. Yeah! Alhatham's notes do mention that item. Scribe Alhatham looked into this matter. Hmm. Understood. Well, if you believe there to be an issue with the diadem, I'd suggest contacting the organizers and getting them to pause the competitions while we investigate. Fair that enough. That makes sense. Okay, then. Let's get back to the venue. We need to tell Karina what's going on. Yep, we really have to. Or, but would they say... Or would they really stop this thing? Would they really... I mean, we're in the final competition, but... I don't know. <sighs> I mean, given the fact that our hate have was looking through this thing, really doesn't uh, give good news at all. So let's check on these people and see what's left of it. Maybe we're about to finish this competition. But Wanderer and our hate have came in and they stopped the people there. Well, more likely Wanderer, he really gave them a punch out. Then I hate them came, came to finish them off. Karina! Ugh, you're finally back. Where have you been? I looked everywhere for you. The third round's already started. We were out capturing some bad guys who wanted to kidnap Sachin. But that's not important right now. We think there might be something wrong with the Diadem of Knowledge and we'd like to investigate it. The Diadem? That seems unlikely. The Diadem of Knowledge has been used in every extravaganza over the last two decades, always without incident. Why has this come up now? I mean, we have this new information that has come to light. And also the Matra wants to stop everything. <laughs> hmm... This is pretty serious. Let me think. Okay, here's the situation. The Diadem is currently in Mount Ima Forest. We moved it there before the third round began. In the third round, contestants have to go into Mount Ima Forest, find the diadem, bring it back, and place it on the stand. The first person to do this gets four points. Considering how close the scores are between our contestants, whoever wins this round is very likely to be the winner of the whole competition. Truth As be told. such, I suspect competition to be very fierce. You might not make it in time. We have to give it a shot. I'll mark the diadem's location for you. Please head there immediately. Let's hope nothing happens. That's true. All right, let's go. Ah, <sighs> this is going to be quite serious, huh? What well, then? The locator stopped working. Is the forest interfering with it? Ugh. Let's just go grab the diadem. Yep, <laughs> we have no time to lose. Um, yeah, that's a place that they. Uh, place to actually, the closest place to actually teleport and grab the thing. But did they, we should have asked if they left recently or did they left like 
or if the competition was already like a while. Well, they left a while back. <laughs> but I guess it doesn't matter at this point. We have to go. We have to get that thing ASAP. There or to the stage? Or weird. Was there something there really? Or no, their mates couldn't have taken it, could they? Yeah. Okay, there they are. I'll take them a needle or two. Who will have gotten the crown? Huh. Looks like Layla has seized the diadem. Oh. But getting to the goal won't be easy. Competition is heating up. Oh, and here's Kabe bringing up the rear. Something's wrong. Hmm. Why didn't we interfere? Where were you? Were we just looking there? We should have told them to stop the thing. But no! Ah, at long last, someone to inherit my estate, and with it, my research. Come, Kabe. Come to me, my child. How do you know my name? Who are you? I am Sachin. Well, to be precise, I am but a fragment of Sachin's mind. Fate is a curious thing. Seeing you reminds me of another I once met. But you are made of sterner stuff than he. More cognizant of the trials and tribulations of this world. It is you who are worthy to inherit all that I once owned. 
We meet for the first time, children. But what I mean to say now is of utmost importance. So please, pay attention and bear witness. You have all performed outstandingly in this Interdashant Championship. The Academia has many rare talents among its ranks, and you are the creme of the creme. But if I were to choose a successor, I would choose you, Kave. Not only because you are victorious, but also due to our similarities in character. Uh, me? Similar to you? Why, yes. Both of us have the misfortune to be idealists. And that is the source of our misery. Twenty-eight years ago, I came to the desert and lived there for eight full years. What do you think I saw there? Alas, endless strife and slaughter. Conflict over water sources. Robbing of merchant caravans. Exploitation of the people relentlessly, day after day. Beyond the wall of Samiel lay a completely different world from the one I knew. The things I witnessed there tormented me greatly. I wished desperately to find a way to save them. So, did you find a way? As a Vahumana scholar, I tried to use Vahumana knowledge to find the answer. I researched history and anthropology, performed countless experiments on human nature, and even sought out the scholars living deep in the desert who called themselves the Lost Darshan. But in the end, I found that the answer I sought simply did not exist. It was not possible to simply assign blame for these transgressions to any one party, for the sins are carved into humanity's very nature. Our nature begets conflict, and conflict begets destruction. This is the inexorable truth. The aim of my research was to draw lessons from history. But what I discovered was that history offers no such guidance. Things can only ever go from bad to worse. After this realization, I could no longer see the meaning in anything that I had ever learned. Consumed by an overwhelming sense of emptiness, I could no longer bear to face life. And so, I decided to bring my life to an end. But before I went through with it, a strange twist of fate led me to come into the possession of this diadem, which has the ability to preserve part of one's consciousness. Into it, I placed my experiences before requesting that the Academia manage my estate. As I thought, the contract you signed with the Academia was in essence your will. But if you'd given up hope on this world, why did you feel the need to do this? I mentioned that I have performed a great many experiments concerning human nature. You may regard this as the very last experiment of them all. The Academia has no shortage of genius talents, nurturing the brightest minds of every generation. And so, with a handsome reward to draw out the worthiest of individuals, my hope was that one day, I would find one who could untangle the mystery of human nature once and for all, and help to move the world onto a better path. I see. So you desired a successor who was not only a genius, but who also understood the suffering of ordinary people. Such a person would have a clearer understanding of humanity, society, and the world. But did you ever consider that wealth numbs the human heart to the pain in the world? Even an idealist may be incapable of following through on your wishes after inheriting your wealth. You are highly intelligent. Yet you are not the sort of person who would understand my line of thinking. To me, this is also part of the experiment. Part of my investigation into human nature. 
whether my successor suffers as a consequence of my research or succumbs to an indulgence in pleasure seeking, my research will have progressed. I grieve the fundamental sickness of the world. I regret the unbearable weight of its history. And I lament the research that I failed to complete. And this, Kave, my dear child, is why you will be of great utility to me. You're... you're absolutely certain that you want to give me everything you owned? For me to do with as I please? I have faith in what I see in you. Now wear the diadem, Kave, and complete the journey that I could not. <sighs> will the verdict I reached cause you suffering, or will this newfound wealth numb your heart? I look forward to your answer. All of my research materials are being stored at all. Huh? I've heard enough! My life's enough of a mess already. The last thing I need is more suffering. Keep your mora. I don't need it. Didn't you say that you saw a lot of people in pain? Well, if that's the case, then your wealth can go to them. I guess that'll be the end of that. Harvey. Are you all right? Any physical discomfort? I'm fine. <sighs> Thanks, Tainari. Don't worry about me. Don't push yourself too hard. Kave. Kave may have broken the diadem but he successfully completed the task prior to that. According to the rules, this makes him the victor of round three. Points-wise, this also makes him the winner of the Interdarshan Championship. As the champion and Sachin's personally designated successor, Kave has obtained the rights to inherit the entirety of his estate. For the avoidance of doubt, can you confirm that it is your intention to donate all of Sachin's wealth? Like I said, he thought that the world is a bad place well then, let's use what he left behind to change it for the better. Rejecting the world will achieve nothing. He and I, we're not the same. All right. As the scribe, I will make a record of this incident on file. The sages will contact you in person for details on how exactly Sachin's estate is to be used. That sounds fine. I don't know if his research findings were right, nor would I know how to finish his research for him. But what I do know is that by ending this here, no contestants will have to suffer. We won't be the last. There will be more championships to come, and countless future scholars will follow in our footsteps. I mean, the fact that it's a celebration held by the Academia, it makes the most sense. Sachin's words can only cause pain, but not anymore. No one else has to hear them now. We're all scholars here. I know full well that shutting down his views like this is autocratic and arrogant. Fine by me. I'll bear that responsibility. It's the least I can do. And, well, it's the only thing I can do. Hmm. Well said. What you've expressed is a sense of justice and idealism that many aspire to, but few dare follow through with. Ooh. Okay, Tom gave him a compliment. Whoa. Then you must have really made a really big impression on him. I say this despite the fact that, in my view, it's quite ridiculous. You have long been aware of what your flaws are, but your pride alone prevents you from admitting it. Nevertheless, your perspective is well suited to appearing in a victory speech. Contestant Kave, on behalf of the organizing committee, it is my honor to congratulate you on your victory. 
What? Please. I don't need your insincere praise. Anyway, this isn't the time or place for debates. Keep your commentary focused on the competition, not my views. Congratulations, Kave. Also, you'll need to prepare for the award ceremony. Looks like the ceremony will be held at the main venue. Let's head over and check it out! Okay, now this is the... <laughs> okay, so this is going to wrap up this episode. <laughs> well, it was as long as I expected. Uh, and yeah, I ran out of time again, but whatever. We already saw what ha uh, the climax of this story quest and whatnot, so I guess this uh, is a pretty good end to at least this part of the story quest. Then we'll go and see how the uh, the celebration is held. I would have liked that someone else would have won. That wasn't the case, unfortunately. I really want, well, truth be told, it's Kabe with six points, then. Sino and Leila with uh, four points, which ma makes them the second place to the two of them, which means that at least she didn't like let down any of the people that chose her, so that's good actually. So, yeah, thank you all so much for watching. I hope that everyone enjoyed this video. And if you did, leave a like and comment down below. Do you think Kabe did the right thing? I mean, he did, did have his own perspective, and he didn't want to inherit anything. He didn't want any more compromising things within him. Even so, he still got, has the um, got the wall, and the scribe is there. He was he's obviously going to write that down. So yeah, and also yeah, congratulations to him. Anyways, so yeah, and also consider to subscribe to his channel so you can see more content like this. I was Game Miracle and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye!